We can all agree that finasteride and minoxidil are the golden standard of treating male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia. Maybe you have used those treatments already, but realized they're not as good compared to somebody else, your friend or colleague who is using them too. It's because not everybody's response to those treatments is the same. And in today's video, I'm going to be shedding some light on that and share with you what is your chance that you are going to be the top 10% responder, the bottom 10% or somewhere in the middle. And what are the types of results that you can expect as a top 10% responder or somebody who is in the middle? So make sure you stay tuned until the end. And before we start, quick shout out to our sponsor, GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. Let me share with you the statistical and clinical data that shows us how likely it is that you will actually respond to the medication like finasteride and minoxidil. You can see it in this chart finasteride response rate where you have about equal chance of becoming a great responder to finasteride and grow incredible amount of hair. But the same way you are also likely to have no improvement whatsoever. In fact, you may increase, you may experience some increases in shedding and your hair loss can actually get worse while on finasteride. That's about 13% chance, while you have about 11% chance of becoming a great responder. And the middle 80% would be guys who experience either slight or moderate improvements. Also, when you're using finasteride and you have hair loss in the vertex area, you can experience substantial benefits after one year mark. It means that it's very important to stick with finasteride for at least two years to draw any definitive outcomes. This is also confirmed in a five-year study done on finasteride on 300 plus men whose satisfaction grew substantially from the month 12 after, fin after using finasteride versus month 60 after using finasteride. Now, as far as using minoxidil, this one-year study done in Germany on 904 subjects found out that the response was about 62%, meaning 62% of individuals got hair regrowth after using minoxidil for one year. And as it was the case with finasteride, it was effective in about 15.9% and about the equal percentage experience ineffectiveness of minoxidil. And the rest 70% found it moderately effective to quite effective. How does it translate to real life and who will be somebody with great response to minoxidil and finasteride versus who will be somebody in the middle and who will be somebody in the bottom 10%. So if we start with the top 10% responders to minoxidil and finasteride, their journeys look something like this. And I've seen many of those cases already. However, as we already said, it's about 10% of overall users who are able to respond this way. This individual has been on finasteride for about 10 years, added minoxidil a year ago. So in 2013, he started uh, with uh, diffuse thinning across the frontal third, mid scalp, even crown partially, and experienced pretty substantial improvement in the first year already. You can see 2014 substantial improvement, 2015 it seems to look even slightly fuller and better, especially the regrowth in the hairline, in the corners of the hairline is even better. Now he was able to maintain this all the way to until 2021. In 2022 he decided to start with minoxidil as well. He used the oral version 5 milligram and you can see that he boosted the thickness of his hair even further. So minoxidil was the decisive treatment that really gave him the thickness, not necessarily the hair regrowth, because it seems like the most hair regrowth he was able to experience between 2013 and 2021. However, the thickness we can definitely see um, thanks to minoxidil. Another case like that would be this guy who used uh, minoxidil and finasteride for only five months. It's a Pretty amazing response, again, top 10, if not top 5%, because in the five month mark, we could debate that you are at the peak of your minoxidil efficacy. However, some other studies say five to eight months, there is still room for improvement. However, there's still a lot of room for improvement when it comes down to taking finasteride. Also, there will be somebody who has been on minoxidil and finasteride for only three months and already is able to regrow his hairline and uh, really start growing new follicles uh, and make start making his forehead lower. 
this is still not complete response this hair has still very high potential to thicken further that will make this response even more amazing and more substantial this is really somebody who is like in the top five to ten percent now if you move down and go to more like moderate response rates it will be uh, this individual who's been using topical finasteride and minoxidil for 11 months and uh, he also added minoxidil 5% foam at night. So he's now probably using uh, minoxidil twice a day. And this is his uh, situation before, where we see diffuse thinning. We can see substantial thinning in the crown area, also frontal third, losing its shape and definition. Uh, but here, 11 months later, we can see that the hair is thickening. It's looking very healthy, especially in the frontal third now, even though his hairline probably wasn't being able to be safe. But the crown area is decreasing in surface. You can see how, it's, how the size of the crown area is getting smaller uh, from the before uh, onto the after picture. So that would be somebody with a moderate improvement. It's not significant to the extent that he wouldn't need a, a, any more transplant at this stage he probably will go for a transplant another moderate improvement will be somebody like this individual who used uh, minoxidil and finasteride in a topical spray we don't know the exact concentrations unfortunately uh, it wasn't even shared but what's noticeable is if you look at the top left picture that's the before picture and top right as well and then compared to the pictures left and right right at the bottom you can definitely see how the diffuse thinning is improving uh, that will be a slight to moderate improvement as well that's how most individuals that I've seen now if we move down and go to somebody who is just a very very average not really kind of interesting responder in sense of like not being able to regrow much hair it will be somebody like this on the before and after picture who has been using minoxidil and finasteride for 13 months uh, it's looking about the same maybe slightly better on the mid scalp and crown the frontal third has been calmed differently on the before picture it's kind of spread into the sides and the front and there is like a hole in the middle and a response that is not significant however it's considered positive because the patient uh, hasn't lost more hair while being on this therapy and this is again what most people will also experience now if you start moving to the bottom 10% of individuals who unfortunately are losing more hair despite finasteride and minoxidil 5% use will be somebody like this who has been using uh, finasteride and minoxidil for six years since his 18s until 24 and unfortunately uh, still was losing ground and here we can already see what's happening this is the type of individual who is very badly predisposed to become like Norwood 7 uh, or at least Norwood 6 that is happening really at the young age even when it tends to be especially aggressive if this is happening in such case even finasteride and minoxidil usage may not help and that's why even in studies you can see about 10 percent or 15 percent of individuals that will not see any improvements even start lose more hair despite using this therapy some of them will lose the hair more drastically than others but it's unfortunate that that's also possible and in such case it makes sense to either go for some stronger inhibition of the 5-alpha reductase with dutasteride and get more of the DHT suppressed the other option would be also experiment with the topical minoxidil whether it's having enough absorption add microneedling if that doesn't help go for oral minoxidil because as we uh, discussed in the other video here uh, the most potent combo that you can have combo that is simple and easy to use will be oral uh, minoxidil and oral dutasteride and it's most guaranteed to work by almost everybody with great success rate the results that you get from this are going to be also more substantial so that would make sense to do at this stage and if that doesn't work on the crown then you can potentially do a transplant on the crown but then make sure that the treatment is at least able to keep the hair in the front uh, that he still has because once you start losing him and that hair despite using 
quite potent treatments like oral minoxidil and oral dutasteride, that's usually the time where you need to strongly reconsider where you should even pursue your hair. And then you kind of stand in front of the decisions of maybe shaving it off completely or maybe going for somebody who is an exceptional hair restoration surgeon who could use your donor so effectively even if it's like super thin, maybe combine FUT and FUE if the donor area density per square centimeter is super high, especially in the most permanent zone, it makes sense to do something like that, but it will have its limitations in the long run, like having the donor area looking super thin and the top will not probably fulfill your expectations even because the, the boldness is so large. So then it really makes sense to even consider shaving it off as a viable method or maybe get a scalp micropigmentation. For all of you who are interested in my one-on-one -on -one consulting services, check out the link below where you can learn more about how I can help you out one-on-one -on -one when trying to reverse your hair loss, get your hair back, find the right hair transplant clinic for your hair, hair type, for your case, for your expectations and budget. That was it from me everybody and see you soon in another video. Take care.